My name is Muhammad Hani, Professor of Family Medicine in uh, Bengal University. I'm a medical education consultant. We'll take you uh, today through the standard setting for clinical exams. Why do we need to set pass mark for clinical exams? Because they are high stakes exams and they have consequences to the medical, to the graduates, uh, especially when they are in like in the exam or final exam in the medical school, for example, or in other specialty exams. There are multiple uh, methods of uh, setting the pass mark. We have relative and absolute methods. Today, we will mainly cover the performance-based absolute methods, uh, which are the contrasting group, and then the borderline methods, borderline group and borderline regression. And we will also go through the Hofstede method for standard setting. So what about the contrasting group? We have the test score distribution based on the total marks that students take uh, or students get. And then we draw two uh, different curves, one for the passing student and another curve for the failing students. We totally ignore the borderline students and the intersection between these two curves is our passing score that applies for the whole batch. Uh, the, as for the borderline groups, we have the borderline group method and borderline regression method. So this is the checklist of the OSCE exam or the clinical exam. Student takes the grades and the, we, we have the, the, the score distribution for the, for the uh, total marks of the students. Then the assessor have another overall judgment or global rating which he uh, evaluates the performance of the students as pass, fail, or borderline. This is a subjective evaluation of a trained professor who is well trained on the definition of borderline student. So he determines whether this is a fail, pass, or borderline, and we draw a curve for the total scores of, these, of this group, this, the borderline groups, and this is our passing score. The mean of the scores of the borderline group is our passing score. What about the borderline regression method? In borderline regression and in borderline group, we need a definite uh, uh, and very clear definition about who, about who is borderline student. We need to train our assessors on this so they can do this easily. In the regression uh, borderline group method, we have a slightly different checklist with four to five global ratings here which are in this case clear fail borderline clear pass very good excellent in the egyptian fellowship of family medicine we have clear fail uh, marginal fail marginal pass and clear pass however we plot what we do is we plot the scores of the students the checklist score based on their overall rating or the global rating so these are the scores for the clear failing students, the borderline, the clear passing, the very good and excellent students. Then we draw a regression line between the scores and based on this, uh, uh, the, uh, the intersection between the borderline blots and the regression line, we determine our passing score. So this will be our passing score. It's quite complicated method, but it has a lot of uh, evidence, uh, scientific evidence to support as a reliable method of uh, determining the pass mark. So what are the differences between the borderline group and the borderline regression? The borderline group does not require uh, a lot of uh, uh, expertise. It's easy to calculate. It produces a limited quality assurance metrics. Um, so you cannot really evaluate the exam uh, uh, using the borderline group. Uh, there are only three global ratings, so it is easier for the assessors. You will only use uh, a portion of the a proportion of the interactions, so you are only selecting the borderline group, not the whole cohort of students, and you need more than at least 20 students to be able to calculate the pass mark based on the borderline group method. For the borderline regression, you are taking the whole cohort together and you are calculating because you are blotting all the scores and you are considering a regression line that represent the, the scores of the whole cohort of students. So uh, using all the interactions, however, it needs more expertise. It needs, uh, it has four to five global ratings classically. It requires variable number of borderline students 
and but it produces a very good metrics or methods to evaluate the performance of each item. What are the advantages and disadvantages of borderline methods in general? Uh, they are not difficult. Uh, it's not difficult to obtain a panel of judges. You are not inviting the judges. You are using their judgment for the OSCE exams. So you are not inviting them to another different meeting like other uh, standard setting methods. Uh, it is reliable because you are using a huge sample of interactions. Actually, it's the sample here is the number of students multiplied by the number of stations. So it is credible because there is expert judgment here and it's based on direct observation they have seen this, the performance of these students uh, in, in the borderline group methods uh, and of course the two methods of borderline um, the disadvantages is that the past score is not known in advance uh, judgment uh, judgments not independent from checklist scoring which should not be the case sometimes a checklist is a very good checklist score gets our line overall judgment uh, and this will improve with, with training, but sometimes it's difficult for the assessors or examiners to uh, put these in different uh, judgments or uh, assessments. It requires uh, quietly a large cohort to achieve enough numbers in the borderline group uh, method, which we, we need 20 plus borderline students in able to, in, to be able to, in order to, uh, to calculate the, the best mark. Uh, the other method is the Hofstede method, which we call compromise method. We select the judges, we, we discuss with them the purpose of the test, the nature of the examinees, what is an adequate or inadequate knowledge, and review the test in details. Then we ask them to answer four questions, very important four questions. What is the minimum acceptable cut score? What is the maximum acceptable cut score? What's the minimum acceptable fail rate? And what's the maximum acceptable fail rate? Then we have the scores represented uh, in a graph and we use this method to determine the best score. So these are the four lines. Passing score above which one always pass, regardless of test difficulty, highest required passing score. And this is the lowest permissible passing score. What's the fail rate and what's the highest, the lowest acceptable and the highest acceptable fail rate? We draw this square, we draw this diagonal line, and then we, we plot uh, the scores of the students. And the intersection is our pass mark and it differs according to the performance of the student. So you have a mixed, it's a compromise method where you assess the exam itself and you assess the performance of students and the, the pass mark, of course, differs according to the uh, uh, performance of the students. What's good about this method? It is easy to implement relatively and the indicators are comfortable always with the decision because it's a consensus. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, are that cut scores may not be in the area defined in the, the judgment, uh, judges estimates it happens and not the first choice for high stakes testing exams it's not very supported by the uh, by evidence statistical evidence to conclude we have no perfect standard setting method we choose the method that's uh, that is suitable for our institute, suitable for our exam, suitable for our the level of the exam, whether it's high stakes exam or not, the resources available and based on the credibility of each method.